Hi everyone, we all know the black shoal formula is one of the simplest things, but the symbols can conceal the simplicity. So let's try to uncover the simple idea behind the formula. We all being told that it assumes the stock price follows geometric Brownian motion. Actually, there's a drift element to it and a good story around why the market will force the drift rate to be equal to the bank rate, which you might know as the risk-free rate but it won't make much of a difference to the explanation here. So let's assume we are in a zero interest rate environment. This assumption doesn't sound as unrealistic today as it used to a decade ago. For European options, the GBM assumptions really amounts to saying that the stock price at a future date is log normally distributed with mean equal to log of S0 minus half the variance and standard deviation equal to sigma times square root of t. This is of course an assumption and is one of the simplest assumptions one can make. Essentially, it is saying the log of the stock price is normally distributed and it means the price can't go negative if it starts positive. To bury the symbols, let's assume the current price of the stock is 10. Its implied volatility is 40% and we are interested in the stock price one year from now. If we plug in these values in the mean and standard deviation, we will find out that the mean is 2.22 and the standard deviation is 0 0.4 and now we can remove the symbols. The current price of the stock is obviously fixed at 10 but the price at a future date can be anything from 0 all the way to infinity. If we buy and it does end up near infinity, then we can join Uncle Scrooge and ask him to be a bit more generous but the probability of that happening is very low considering the parameters we have assumed. We can actually calculate the probabilities because remember we are dealing with just a simple log normal distribution. So let's split the domain into intervals of 1 quid each. Notice we have combined everything above 35 because the probability of the price exceeding 35 is small and gets smaller as one goes higher. And now we can calculate the probability of the stock price taking a value in each of the interval. I reckon those normal distribution tables we printed might be too dusty. So instead of trying to locate the printouts, we can just use the log normal function in Excel or numbers or Google Sheets. Today price is 10 so the probability will be concentrated at 10 but then it will spread with time. Here is the one year distribution. Now we can take simple average of each interval. If you're not happy with this rounding then you can increase the number of intervals to increase the accuracy but it won't make much difference to the price to two decimal places which is good enough for our purposes here. Notice the average of the values above 35 is equal to 39. As we saw earlier, the price can go up to infinity, but the probability declines with increasing price, so the effective average comes out to be 39. Now to calculate the average price, we just multiply the average value by the respective probability, and if we sum all of these, we will get 10, which is the current stock price. Remember interest rate is zero so on average we earn nothing. By the way if you copy the screen you won't get 10. Reason being I'm displaying the labels for every other category so that it remains visible to see. Notice there are four intervals in this region. This the number of bars which is four but only two labels. Hopefully you can recreate the labels but let us know if you can't and we will be happy to share the full list of labels. Now let's say we have a call option with a strike of 10. So the option pays nothing if the stock price happens to be less than 10. So these probabilities are wasted and they don't contribute to the value. If you multiply and add the truncated list, you will get 5.8. And remember the first term in the black shoals. So it captures this 5.8 truncated average of the stock price truncated above the strike, as simple as that. Now to receive the asset under the payoff scenarios, we will have to pay the strike price of 10, 
but we pay 10 in all scenarios, so calculating the value of paying the strike is easy. We can sum the probabilities and then multiply the sum by 10. So we get 4.21, and this is the second term of the Black-Scholes. Let's write the full Black-Scholes formula when r is 0. Substituting the two values, we see the price is 1.59. Please give a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos like this one, and I look forward to seeing you in the next.